people can show up as they show up. Let's go over what we do every morning. Um, gratitude, I'm really not going to get that much into it because it's part of what I'm going to be talking about today. I have been preparing for today's Zoom for close to two months. Um, my therapist helped me gather a lot of the exercises and stuff that I'll be going over this morning, but I will also be sharing um, if you are in the new Dream Team training page, as you know, we delete the actual Zoom post and then it goes, the Zoom goes up into the replays. I mean, the, the replay goes up into the Zoom schedule. Under the replay, I will share these worksheets. If you are not part of the Dream Team, um, I know one of you is not, I will get those sheets to you as well. And if anybody else is not part of the Dream Team new page, then I will get those to you. Or if you can't find it, just reach out in Messenger and we'll talk about that. Um, but in the morning, we always say, practice gratitude. It is important that you practice gratitude. And as I go into it a little bit more with the meat and potatoes of today's topic, you'll understand why gratitude is so important. Um, I did not believe in gratitude when I first started, even though I was, um, you know, in recovery and therapy and all that good stuff, I still didn't practice it. And it has changed so many things for me. Company news. We have our brand new milk free vegan vanilla shake mix that is live. Um, that's very exciting. Um, I know for a long time we have been wanting something along those lines. So we finally have that. Um, okay. Also, Jason's talking about three new products launching. And two of them are going to blow our mind. So I'm super looking forward to that as well. The um, February bomb leaderboard is still up for the second half until the 28th of this month. Um, we still have the 50% first order bonus thing going on. Um, let me check in here. I believe the Boss Babe DFT, DFTs are still available, but let me just double check that. Um, yes, I'm, the Boss Babe DFTs are still available. Again, limited edition. Yes. Okay. I do have mine and they are gorgeous. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Um, Kutakana, there's going to be so many people there. I'm really looking forward to what they're going to be sharing with us. And again, if you are not in the Dream Team page, I will make sure I share with you what's going on as well. All righty. So did I miss anything as far as team news? I think I got it all. Okay. Spike Palooza. There we go. Spike Palooza. It's coming up April 8th. Um, it's at the Gaylord Texan. Last year was my first time being able to get to the Thrive Palooza. And let me tell you, I was terrified to go, but it was the best experience I've ever had. So if you can get there, get there. If you can't get there, try to get there anyway. It's worth it. All righty. So the meat and potatoes, how you talk to yourself. Being part of this business and even life itself, I've realized how important this is. And when you change your self-talk, things change for you. And I've noticed that to be true. Don't say, I can't sign a promoter. Just say, I haven't signed a promoter yet. And believe that you're going to. So understanding self-talk. Take a minute to think about what you've said to yourself already this morning, this week. Was it critical or was it kind and helpful? How did you feel after you engaged in this inner discussion? We all do it. We might not realize we do it, but we do it. Self-talk is something you do naturally throughout your waking hours. And people are now becoming more aware that positive self-talk is a powerful tool for increasing your self-confidence and curbing negative emotions. People who can master positive self-talk are thought to be more confident, motivated, productive, and successful. 
Can you master it overnight? Hell no. Don't even try. How does self-talk work? Positive self-talk comes naturally to some, but most people need to learn how to cultivate positive thoughts and dispel the negative ones. With practice, it can become more natural to think good thoughts rather than bad ones. Positive self-talk is supportive. It's affirming. Um, for example, the two statements I'm going to share with you are positive self-talk. I'm going to speak up in the meeting today because I have something important to contribute. I don't think I want to speak up in the meeting. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, one, the first one I shared with you is a positive plan and a positive attitude. It helps you have the confidence to say something in that meeting. I don't think I want to speak up in the meeting today because I'll look foolish if I say the wrong thing. That's a negative comment, and that's going to keep you from speaking up and sharing something that could be extremely helpful to many. Negative self-talk is called, um, as my therapist says, is called rumination. R-U-M-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. It's the flip side of positive self-talk. It happens when you replay upsetting or cringeworthy thoughts or events over and over again in your head. Thinking through a problem can be useful, but if you spend so much time taking every small issue in detail and talking about how you can't do something to yourself, you're most likely going to experience depression and anxiety from it. This next statement will show negative thoughts can grow and become self-defeating. I look so fat in this dress. And then you start to think over and over again. I really am fat. Look at those thighs. No wonder I can't get a date. Why can't I lose weight? It's impossible. No matter what you do, it's not going to work because you're telling yourself it's not going to work. Language matters. Researchers have found that it's not just about what you say to yourself. It's also the language that you use to say it. A report in 2014 describes the role of language and self-talk. What's the key? When practicing self-talk, don't refer to yourself in the first person, such as I or me. Instead, refer to yourself in the third person using he or she, or even refer to yourself by name. Everybody knows the famous Breen Brown. She's an amazing person. She is a professor at the University of Houston Graduate College. She's a motivational speaker. She refers to the negative voices in her head as gremlins. And by giving her negative thoughts a name, she's able to step away from them and even poke fun at them. How many times have our leaders told us to give that negative thought or negative talk in your head a name? Like, my name's Shannon. That negative voice in my head is Shanae Because she's a bitch. She's a cocky, evil bitch. The report goes on to say that using the third person in self-talk can help you step back and think more objectively about your response and your emotions whether you're thinking about a past event or looking to a future event. It will also help you reduce that stress, depression, and anxiety. How do you get started? That's a big question we've all asked ourselves. I know I've asked myself that question since I've been here. Listen and learn. Spend a few days listening closely to your inner dialogue. Are you supportive of yourself? Are you critical of yourself? Are you negative of yourself? Would you be comfortable saying those thoughts and words to someone you loved, to your husband, to your child, to your mother? Are common threads or themes repeated? 
write down important or frequent negative thoughts. Once you write them down, change them. You can be here and motivate others. And people say, oh, you're so motivating and you're so inspiring. But they don't realize sometimes behind closed doors, you're your own worst enemy. Yeah, I see that smile on your face. You know, you know. Think it through. Ask yourself the following questions about each thought that you might have written down. Am I overreacting? Is it really that big of a deal? Is this important in the long run? Am I overgeneralizing? Am I coming to a conclusion based on an opinion or experience? No, am I mind reading? Am I assuming others have specific beliefs or feel a certain way about me? Am I just guessing at how they'll react? Am I labeling myself too harshly? Do you refer to yourself using words like stupid, hopeless, or fat? I know I have. It is an all or nothing thought. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this an all or nothing thought? Am I viewing one incident as either good or bad without considering that the reality is rarely black or white? There is no black or white. It's always gray. The answer usually lies within that gray area between the two. How truthful and accurate is this thought? Step way back and consider the accuracy of the thought as a friend might as someone who cares about you might. Now switch gears. You have a better idea of how your inner thoughts have, are skewed. It's time to switch gears and learn a new approach to self-talk. Look back at the thoughts on your list, reword them in a kinder, more positive light. Example, what an idiot. I really screwed up on that story today. No one will ever buy it from me. This is the end of my career. I can do better than that. I'm sorry, alternative. <laughs> I can do better than that. I'll prepare and I'll get better at it each time. Maybe I'll even get some public help from friends. My team could help me. And this will actually be good for my business. Everything's a learning process. You can't come into something and know exactly what you're doing right away. I don't care how long you've been doing it. Every day is a learning experience. If you're done learning, you might as well give up. If you think you know it all, you're wrong. Next example. Can't do that in a week. It's impossible. Alternative. It's a lot to do. I'll take it one step at a time. My friends or my team will help me and I can get it done. Third example, how ridiculous. I can't teach myself how to think or talk more positively. Alternative, I can learn how to do this just like everybody else can. I'm going to give it a shot. Better yet, I'm going to do it. When you banish your inner critic, you become more productive. When you have positive inner conversations, there is no downside. Some people will find it easier to adopt the positive self-talk. Others will have to work on it, self-included. Either way, it's a worthwhile step to bettering yourself, improving your sense of self-worth, and having a happier life. Why it matters. Most people that have been or have become successful credit their successes to having a strong inner voice. We understand that just by each little motivational podcast or whatever that we hear on YouTube. All those um, people that's been going through something like this for years that have become successful. 
It's all because they've learned how to talk to themselves inside with positivity. Positive self-talk or negative self-talk is all connected to your confidence. If you're having negative self-talk, then you're limiting your personal growth. The danger of not negative self-talk, it typically does not reflect reality, but it can convince others because when you're telling yourself these things, that's what you're putting out into the world. And you can convince people that that's who you are, but that's wrongly convincing you. If you feel you're not good enough, others may see you that way. It can paralyze you into self-absorption and inaction. If you've already have a condition like I do, depression and anxiety, dysfunctional and destructive self-talk, we can become incessant and overly critical. And when you become overwhelmed by the negativity, you can wallow in self-pity. You can attack yourself where it never ends. It can even cause you to want to do bad things to yourself. My negative self-talk of never being able to get better, of never deserving more than the abuse that I was getting, at, I could never be a good mom. I could never be a good grandmother. Led me to a path of destruction. I was sitting on a park bench drinking drain cleaner to end my life. We all deserve better than that. Okay, so I have a shit ton of work. <laughs> and my therapist helped me get all this together. So... Um, I'm very thankful to him. Identif okay, self-talk, identifying, challenging, and changing. Your self-talk, whether you're aware of, it or not, aware of it or not, either sabotages or supports you. Negative self-talk can result in unnecessary stress, anxiety, depression, self-doubt. But positive self-talk can encourage self-confidence, effective coping skills, achievement, and a general feeling of well-being. So ask yourself, is my self-talk building me up or tearing me down? Is my way of thinking helping me or hindering me? Instruction. Think of a recent time when you were experiencing negative or un unhelpful thoughts. What was the situation? How did you feel? What did you do? Now take that step by step and see if changing the way you think about it could possibly bring, bring out a better result. What is one thing you're willing to start doing that can help you better manage your negative self-thinking? Changing your self-talk. Catch it. Recognize when you're having negative or unhelpful thoughts. You need to drink water in. Really severe dry mouth from all this talking. Okay. Okay, control it. Stop. When you find yourself thinking negatively, say stop to yourself. Stop the downward spiral of thoughts leading to sadness, guilt, anxiety, self-doubt, hurt, etc. Challenge it. Challenge what you're saying to yourself using various questions that I will share with you in a minute. Change it. Change the negative messages you're saying to yourself to more realistic, positive ones in order to bring about a more pleasant and helpful emotion. Cherish it. Enjoy the moment of the feeling you've just created for yourself. Now, this is how you challenge your thoughts. Ask yourself these questions when you have that negative thought. Is this a helpful thought? What's a more healthy thought? 
what would, I'm sorry, what would I tell a friend in this situation? What evidence do I have for what I'm thinking to myself that makes it true? What evidence do I have against it? Is there any other reason this situation could have occurred? Is there another way of looking at it? What are some other points of view? What is the worst and what is the best outcomes? If the worst did happen, how would I be able to cope with it? Would I be able to live through it? Is there anything I can do about this right now? If so, take the appropriate actions. If not, accept it and move the hell on. Take yourself out of it. Okay. Now I told you we would be getting more into gratitude and explaining of why gratitude is self-important. I mean, self-important. So important during a business like this. Gratitude means appreciating the good things in life, no matter how big, no matter how small, making the practice of gratitude a regular part of your day builds happiness, self-esteem, and it provides so many other health benefits. There's different ways of doing this. A gratitude journal. Every evening or every morning, spend a few minutes writing down some good things about your day, or if you do it in the morning, some things about your day yesterday. This isn't limited to major events. You might be grateful for simple things, such as a good meal, talking to a friend, or overcoming an obstacle. These are the things you need to think about. Don't put your problems and your thoughts into the world's problems and thoughts. You're an individual. How can you change your individual life? If more people take the time to do this, this world could become a better place. Give thanks is another way. Keep your eyes open throughout the day for reasons to just say thank you. Make a conscious, a, a conscious effort to notice when people do good things, whether for you or for someone else. Tell that person you recognize their good deed and give them a sincere thank you. Another way, mindfulness walk. Go for a walk and make a special effort to appreciate your surroundings. You can do this by focusing on each one of your senses one at a time. Spend a minute listening to the sounds around you. Spend a minute looking at the world around you. And so on. Try to notice the sights, sounds, smells, and sensations you would usually miss, such as the cool breeze on your skin or the way the clouds make, basically stop the smell of the roses. Another way is a gratitude letter. Think about someone who you appreciate. This person could be a person who has had made your impact on your life or someone who just inspires you to be better. Write a letter that describes why you appreciate them. Include specific examples and details. It's up to you whether you share the letter or not. Another way is grateful contemplation. Remove yourself from distractions such as phones. <laughs> we all know that one. Remove yourself from your phone. Remove yourself from the TV, Netflix, Hulu, all those good things. Even Sweet Magnolias. Gosh, I love that show. <laughs> And take five to 10 minutes and mentally review the good things from your day. The key to this technique is consistency. Think of it as you would brush your teeth. Think of it as you would spend your day, a moment of your time exercising to work out. Think of it as a moment you would spend with your child. It should become a normal part of your daily self-care. This technique can be practiced as part of prayer, meditation, or on its own, however you want to do it. But try to take 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes, I'm saying 10. Step away from everything that is in the day and just be with yourself. Another way is a gratitude conversation. Pick another person. Take turns listing three things that you're grateful for throughout the day. 
then spend time discussing and contemplating each point rather than hurrying through your list. If you make a part of, make this part of your routine, you can do it before a meal, before bed, or at other, another regular time that you've both picked throughout the day. Um, okay, so this one, you, you all know about the gratitude journal. This is one that my therapist shared with me. We all have the five minute journal where it tells you to write down three things you're grateful for, three goals you have for the day, so on and so forth. But this one is more like in letter form. Two, you put your name, you can put somebody else's name, it doesn't matter. Thank you for being my blank. You can thank yourself for being your inner voice. I can thank Melanie for kicking me in the butt when I need it. I can thank Kayla and Katrina for showing up when I need them. It doesn't matter. I can thank Sky for being such a beautiful person. I can thank Katie Sue for making me think of ways I can help others. But then list them. I appreciate you because one, two, and three. I think you're special because blank. You make me laugh when blank. I have fun with you when blank. You're important to me because blank. When I think about you, I feel blank. And then from self or your name, however you want to do that. And then you got the, there's another one here that's a gratitude journal that lasts for seven days and you repeat it every seven days, but it's not like where you have to write the same exact things every day. Day one, one good thing that happened to me today, something good I saw someone else do. Today I had fun when. Day two, something I accomplished today. Something funny that happened today. Someone I was thankful for today. Day three, again, something I was thankful for today. Today I smiled when. Something about today I always want to remember is. Day four, what was one good thing that happened? Day was special because. Today I was proud of myself because. Day five, something interesting that happened. Someone I was thankful for. I had fun when. Day six, that one's, um, you know, something about today I always want to remember, something funny, my favorite part of the day. Day seven, something I was happy about today, something good I saw someone else do today, something I did well today. And you just take and repeat those every single week and it becomes habit forming. You could do a gratitude jar. I have all the slips too that you could actually put in it, which again, I am going to share and I'm not going to read them all. I'm just going to go over what the gratitude jar is. Take a big jar, like, um, I don't know whether, if you use mayonnaise, after you empty it out, wash it up really good. Put something around the front of it. Make your own label. Make it colorful, make it bright, make it happy. Have your kids help you. Instructions, begin by helping Every person in your house, personalize the jar with decoration. Use ribbons, stickers, magazine cutouts, drawings. It doesn't matter. Just use your imagination. Make it, like I said, make it fun. After decorating, it's time to add the first gratitude statement, one to three, from each person. This is how you get your whole family involved, whether it be your husband or your children or just your partner, it doesn't matter. No, we cannot write gratitude statements for our pets. I'm sorry. We can be grateful for them, but we can't say what they th they're thinking. <laughs> um, I only say that because I was actually asked that. You can make it, I mean, so you have like blank slips that each person can write on every day. I'm grateful for my cat because she makes me laugh. I'm thankful for the dinner mom made tonight. It was my favorite pizza. Um, actually, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get into the chat real quick. They're not names of journals. These are sheets that were provided to me by my therapist and I am going to share them. 
if you're not in the new dream team training page, let me know and I'll get them to you in messenger. If you are in the new dream team training page up with the zoom replays, the zoom schedule, there's all the replays this day with this date with the replay, I'll reply to the replay, all of these pictures. One of, okay, so back to this. Um, I appreciate my grandma because she visited me when I was six. Have each of the participants write down a gratitude statement to three gratitude statements, but only do one per slip of paper. You can take a moment and discuss each one as a family, but don't rush through it. When done discussing it, fold the gratitude statement and put it in the jar. When you fill up the jar where you can't get any more into it, that's when you open it up with your family and go back through all the things that you were grateful for. You can do it on a monthly basis. You can do it on a three month basis, however you wanna do it. And with that, there are several examples of slips you can cut up and start it off with if you need help with like um, just getting it started. The next thing I have is a, a best possible self visualization error exercise. That's a hard word, visualization, visualization. That's it, visualization. <laughs> what would you like your look? What would you like your look? Look, okay, I need another drink, hold on. Better, okay. What would you like your life to look like in the future? How would you like to be able to spend your time? Who would be by your side? In this exercise, you want to imagine your best possible self in the future where the things that you've wanted has gone as well as possible. You've accomplished all your goals. Now you want to write them down. You want to imagine and describe your best possible self in three domains personal, professional, and social. When you've completed that, you go to this step and visualize. Take a full week and spend five minutes visualizing your best possible self each day. Focus on one domain each day, cycling through each of the domains throughout the week. Record your practice in the chart below, which again have these sheets. <clears throat> to perform visualization, picture your best possible self in as much detail as possible. Think of the way the world looks around you or whatever room you're in. Visualize yourself in the clothes you're wearing. Imagine the sights, sounds, and feelings. Jason and Paul have both talked to us about this. In the beginning, it is common to feel distracted or have trouble visualizing it. If you notice your mind wandering, that's okay. Just simply try to return your thoughts to the exercise once you become aware that you have wandered. And again, this one comes with sheets where you can write down your personal domain, um, professional domain, and what was the other one? Social domain. Next one I have is the strengths use plan. People who know their strengths and use them frequently tend to have a higher health self-esteem. They tend to have better moods, less stress. They learn to use their strengths into things that they can achieve. Hi, gorgeous. I see you. Hi, sweetie. I love your Annie dress or shirt. Red polka dots, I love that. <laughs> In this activity, you're gonna to wanna to create a plan to use your strengths every day for a full week. Use your strengths in either new or familiar ways or use them to change the things that you're already doing. The key is to use your strengths intentionally and purposefully rather than part of a habit or a routine. Like in step one, it says circle three of your greatest strengths or write your own. And the strengths that they have listed here are creativity, curiosity, love of learning, bravery, 
honesty, love, kindness, social awareness, leadership, forgiveness, humility, self-control, optimism, humor, spirituality, flexibility, persistence, appreciation of beauty, gratitude, enthusiasm, and teamwork. They're the ones that are listed. You could find a part of each of these in yourself. But what you need to do here is to circle three of the greatest ones that are inside of you the most. Step two for the next week, write a brief plan for using those chosen strengths. For example, you chose kindness, your plan. I will bring breakfast in for the office or your job, or if you're working from home to another family. You chose curiosity. After dinner, I'm going to go for a walk and notice something new in my neighborhood. Number three. Um, where is number three? Oh, here it is. Creativity. Make a plan. I will create a new story or create a new reel this week and do that. And then it has a blank sheet where you get to write down those strengths and the plans that you're going to do. Strengths exploration. This part was fun. I'm actually excited to do it again. Those who know their strengths and use them frequently tend to have more success in several areas of their life. They feel happier. They have better self-esteem. They're more likely to accomplish their goals. To use your strengths effectively, it's important to have a clear idea of what they are and how they can be used. Some of your greatest strengths may be easy to recognize while others go unnoticed because they feel ordinary to you. So listen to your friends when they're talking to you and telling you your strengths. <clears throat> in this worksheet, you will identify your strengths and ways, and ways in which you're already using them. Additionally, you will explore new ways to use your strengths and your advantages. And that has a lot more words listed and then it goes into the next sheet with the relationships. List the strengths you possess that help you in your relationship. Describe the specific time, a specific time, your strengths were able to help you in that relationship. Describe two new ways you could use strengths in your relationship. Then the next sheet is for professionalism, and it's the same ones. Then it goes into personal fulfillment, and it's the same ones there as well. Again, I will share all of these. The next sheet is challenging negative thoughts. This is something I have to use on a regular basis. I have decades of crap to get through, but taking and spending some time on, with this kind of ex, um, exercise for each one of those things has been extremely helpful. Depression, poor self-esteem and anxiety are often the result of irrational negative thoughts. Someone who regularly receives negative feedback thinks and talks to themselves negatively. Just as someone who regularly receives positive feedback, they start to feel positive about themselves. But then there's those kinds that can receive positive feedback that are used to negative feedback. So they automatically take that positive feedback and irrationalize it in their own head and what you need to do is be able to change those irrational thoughts so you would answer the following questions to assess your thought is there a substantial evidence for my thought is there evidence contrary to my thought am i attempting to interpret this session this situation without any evidence what would a friend think about this situation? If I look at this situation positively, how's it different? Will this even matter a year from now? Will it matter five years from now? Next one is core beliefs. Um, yeah, we all have heard the thing of the core four. Everyone looks at the world differently. Two people can have the same experience, yet different interpretations of what happened. Now, 
I know as a woman, I've come across this so much, and I know each one of you have as well, where you and somebody with you both have done the same exact thing at the same exact time in the same exact place, and both of you look at it differently or explain it differently. Think of the core beliefs like a pair of sunglasses. Everyone has a different shade, and it causes them to see things differently, right? So the situation is you meet a new person and think about asking them to go out for water or lunch. It says here on coffee, but we're thrivers, so we don't think coffee. <laughs> um, core belief, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. That's one person's thought. The other person is, I am worthy, I am worthy. The one person, why would they ever go out with me? And they don't ask. The other person, we might actually have fun together and actually ask. Many people have negative core beliefs that are har that cause harmful consequences. And it's got a couple different ones listed. Some, some common examples. I'm unlovable. I've felt that way. I'm not good enough. I've definitely felt that way. I'm a bad person. Check. I'm stupid. I'm ugly, I'm abnormal, check, check, check. I'm boring, I'm worthless, I'm undeserving. Check, check, and check. You have to learn how to be able to identify them and change them around. List three pieces of evidence contrary to that negative core belief. For example, if you take the I'm a bad person, I used to think that way about myself. Three pieces of evidence contrary to that negative core belief. The first one is, I'm always looking for ways to help another. The second one, I will give to someone else before I receive. I will do without so they can have. So that's all contrary to me being a bad person. So that's what you need to do. You need to find contrary beliefs to the thing that you're saying is negative about yourself. The next one is life story, past, present, and future. Writing a story about your life can help you find meaning and value in each of your experiences. It will allow you to organize your thoughts and use them to grow. People who develop stories about their life tend to experience a greater sense of meaning which can contribute to their happiness and help them achieve their goals. And it has three different sections where you write about the past, the present, and the future. <clears throat> Some people would think this is for a kid, but it actually works for adults as well. It's the about me sentence completion. I was really happy when something my friends like about me is, I'm proud of. My family is happy when I, in my business, I'm good at, Something that makes you unique is, that's another one, the self-esteem journal, which is a daily thing where you write down, it has different prompts for you to use, which I will share. It comes with a list of positive traits. But this positive trait, each of you can probably find, no, can definitely find where each one of the positive traits listed is a part of yourself. Kind, intelligent, hardworking, loyal, attractive, down to earth, goofy, creative, accepting. It's just some of them. There is a positive experiences worksheet where you write briefly about when you've displayed each of the following qualities. The qualities listed are courage, kindness, selflessness, love, sacrifice, wisdom, happiness, and determination. There's a she here that gives you positive steps to well-being. This one here is another one that I like that you can use for yourself, your hubby, your children, my strengths and qualities where you have to list three things of your, that you're good at, three things you like about your appearance, three ways you have helped others, three things you value most, three compliments you've received, three challenges you've overcome, three things that make you unique, and three times that made you've made others happy. 
best possible self visualization exercise. Um, that comes with like a whole bunch of them for all different things, which I'm not going to go over that one right now, but I will share it. And that comes with sentence completions as well. I have also, um, my therapist Jamie said that this would be really awesome to share with all of you. And it's like positive psychology prompt cards and they're, they're colorful. And what you do is you like cut them up and you go through them to where you have a different one each day. Like has, how has another person shown that they care about you within the past week? Describe something fun you did. It's, it's like, um, let me see it. So eight, 16, 24 of them. And then you have a, I have a self-care assessment to share with you guys as well, where you have to give yourself one, two, or three stars. And um, self-care activities help you with your self-esteem and your self-talk. It helps you maintain good health and improve your well-being. You'll find that many activities you already do as a part of your normal routine and never realize that they could be a part of your self-care. In the assessment, you will think about how frequently or how well you're performing different self-care activities. And it's important for you guys to remember self-care is not selfish. It's needed in this business. It is extremely important for you to practice self-care on a daily basis because if you don't people can drop you down and dig a hole in the ground for you that you're going to jump in we take them <clears throat> sorry we take things that they say to heart because of our own self-talk and it keeps us from growing and moving forward don't let that happen to you. We could go over self-talk, self-care, self-esteem for every Zoom for a year, but I'm going to let you guys go. <laughs> it was Wellness Wednesday, so I thought this was a good topic to share. This is something, like I said, I've been preparing for quite some time with a lot of help from my therapist. Um, his name is Jamie, and I am so grateful for him. He has helped me change so much in my life. He's helped me have better relationships with my family, with my grandchildren. It's important for me to have a good relationship with my kids and my grandbabies. It's even more important for me to have a good relationship with myself just like it is for each of you to have a good relationship with yourself. Just like it is for you to remember, there may be people in your life that negatively say things to you. That's because they're not happy within themselves. Don't personalize what they say. That's their bullshit, not yours. I'll get these to everybody. I will upload the replay. Um, it'll all be in there before 2 p.m. Eastern because I do have something I have to do this morning. But go out there and help others today. Go out there and help yourself today. Go out there with confidence and self-worth that you can do anything today. And I promise you, you'll have a better day if you keep that thought forefront in your mind. Have a great day. Happy Wednesday. And I love you all.